grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Even for sins we don't know we're doing, we need forgiveness. Those soldiers needed forgiveness. Others need forgiveness. You and I need forgiveness. But even more so, when we sin and we know what we are doing. We can make a long list of our sins, of those that have been committed in thought, word, and deed, sins of omission and commission, like hanging on to the bottle a little too much and doing one-arm curls, too much greed, too much lust, too much envy, too much stealing and cheating, selfishness, losing our temper, and the list can go on. But the problem with long lists, whether they be detailed or just a long list with simple words, they don't get at the root of the problem. The root of the problem is sin. What we often identify are the symptoms of our sin and fail to realize what's all behind it. But our beloved Savior in his first word from the cross looks behind all the shadows and looks directly into our hearts and he sees what you and I need. We need forgiveness. How often haven't we walked away from a house of worship, this house of worship, and what happened and hurt was heard on the inside has no relationship to what follows that afternoon or even the ride home from church? But then we can look at our own lives and see the mess we've made of it. And our plea is, oh Jesus, forgive me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't think, it seems like I can't even help myself. And so what do we do? We go and devise our own fig leaves to cover our shame and our sin, much like Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. We have been called by God to declare the excellencies of all that he has done for us and for the entire world. We were claimed by our beloved Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the waters of holy baptism and united with his death and resurrection and given new life in him. But wow, do I, have you had a hard time saying, Lord, be it to me according to your word. Brothers and sisters, it's time. Now is the time to say, Father, forgive me. I don't know what I'm doing. And even when we know what we're doing, it seems almost impossible to stop from doing it. But the glorious good news, my brothers and sisters in Jesus, is that the Father forgives. He hears the plea of his beloved Son, and so from the agony of the cross, the Christ of God who has come to take our place, our great high priest pleads for you and for me and says to his heavenly Father, forgive them. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And the Father does. He does forgive. He does not forgive somehow as though we deserved it, that our good intentions, our good works somehow move him to forgive. Just because you or I say, I'm a sinner, I'm sorry, forgive me, doesn't mean you merit forgiveness. What you are doing in reality is you're pleading for mercy and making promises as we often do, I won't do it again. Come on. How often have you said that? 
And when you didn't keep that promise, well, you know what? That's a sin too, isn't it? Because you made a promise you have not kept. We're forgiven only and completely forgiven because of Jesus. We're forgiven because of the one who intercedes for us and beseeches his heavenly father and says, forgive them. This eternal son of God, born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem, came into this world so he could make that prayer to his heavenly father, forgive them. He knows the life we live. He shared our trials, temptations, sufferings, and death. So he could say, forgive them. That's why he suspended between heaven and earth and held to the cruel cross by those jagged spikes so that we could be forgiven. For without that plea, without that sacrifice, we would be in most desperate straits. We would remain as we are, poor, miserable, forlorn, lost creatures who don't know what we're doing. And so as you heard the prophet Isaiah say, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. And a transformation takes place we begin to know what we are doing. You see, the Father's forgiveness earned by Jesus does more than wipe the slates clean. A criminal who is pardoned is still a criminal. You can take Tylenol for a fever, but it does nothing to cure the underlying of an infection. When the Father forgives, he does more than pardon. He does more than excuse the consequences of the disease. He does more than deal with the symptoms of the disease. He heals the disease itself. And he does so by the blood of his son, which cleanses us from all our sins. And he makes us his own. And he lives in us and we live in him. If sin means to walk away from God and be lost in utter confusion, not knowing what we're doing, then forgiveness is the Father taking us back to himself, no longer lost, but found, no longer going out in utter confusion, because we're beginning to know what we're doing. You've come here today. You've heard the Christ of God in the midst of his shame and agony pray as our great high priest. Father, forgive them. And he does. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>